from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. I love it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's one 800 5 800 talk 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Us 101. Well, it's Like Us 101. Welcome to the class. Spend less dough and get more ass. If baby want a steak, baby gotta wait. Because I ain't spending more than $40 on a date. Yeah. Buy ya, lick it, don't buy ya. B, if she answers the cell phone, disappear. Yeah. Want to get laid? Gotta be an oh. asshole. Spike, use prophylactics with Tabasco. Hit it, quit it, no time to spoon. These are the rules of Professor Poon. Got a knocked up, but you look in the switch. Pull a Hail Mary and dump that bitch. Kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. Bye. Kiss 101. Bye. Kiss 101. Welcome to class, son. Bye. Kiss 101. Yes, it's like it's 101. The ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I'm your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Like Us 101. Many of you new to this class, always new members, always new people joining. Many of you misunderstand the purpose of Like Us 101. Many of you think that Like Us 101 is something that it's not. Let me tell you what it's not. Like Us 101 is not a course to help save your marriage. It's not. Like Us 101 is not a place to learn how to avoid divorce. How to treat your husband or your wife. It's not a place to learn how to discipline your children. Get more sex in your relationship. We're not here to do that. This is a class that teaches guys how to get laid. And we teach guys to avoid the... And you know what I'm talking about. Energy money, time that it takes to get laid. Most guys spend too much time, money, and energy trying to get laid. You do. I mean, i got to say, many of you guys just waste your time spinning your wheels on chicks that are never, ever, ever going to give you what you want. It's a tragedy, but it's true. Many of you guys spend time talking to chicks two, three, four, ten times a day, months at a time. It's not going anywhere. It's never going anywhere. You think if you keep talking and she keeps chit-chatting with you that eventually she's going to put out. That's not what's going to happen. She's not going to respect you. You have to cut your losses when they do that. You have to say, this is not happening. Some of these girls are treating you like their gay friend. You know, they're calling you seven, eight, nine, ten times a day. They're sending you text messages 20 times a day. Where are you? What are you doing? What are you doing next? What are you doing tomorrow? Where were you today? I called you. You didn't answer. And you guys are responding. Stop it. Any chick that does that to you, whether or not you've had sex with them, Forget it. Stop it. Stop with that stuff. You are wasting your time. Seriously. I have chicks trying to run that game on me, you know. Uh, You know, before we even get together the first time, they're calling and calling and chatting and chit-chatting. 
Oh, they've got plenty of time. Plenty of time to uh, hang out with their friends. They get time to go to the beach. They get time to do their laundry, wash their hair. They get time to go have a manicure. But um, women will try to stretch out the amount of time you spend with them as much as they possibly can before they have to put out. Blah, 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 blah. And there comes a time when you have to cut your losses. You just have to say, enough of the phone calls, enough of the goddamn text messaging already. Forget it. Done. Not to mention the money some of you guys waste. The time you waste. The energy you waste. And by the way, lest you say that that stuff doesn't have any value, oh, what's the difference? I spent a little time. Big deal. The time you spend has value because you could be spending it getting laid with somebody else who's going to give you what you want. If you're looking for a relationship, heaven forbid, you could be spending your time doing that instead of wasting your time being the gay friend. The gay friend. Nothing wrong with people being gay. The thing is, if you're not gay, you don't need to have... The female who looks at you as the gay friend. You know what I mean by the gay friend? Nothing derogatory about gays. No. And then women talk to... You're a guy hoping to get laid with a chick, and the chick looks at you the way she looks at her gay male friends. Blah, 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 blah. No action. Nothing happening. No forward motion. Nothing. Jesus. You you have to stop that stuff. When you're talking to somebody, it has to be going somewhere. Ever been with somebody who delays the first date as long as possible? They just want to chit-chat with you forever? No good. Cut that stuff off. And stop with the text messaging. Do not respond to every text message. Please, I'm begging you. You boys are tethered. You're pussy whipped. It's pathetic. Pissing me off. My job as your professor is to teach you how to get laid while you spend a minimum amount of money, time, energy on chicks who are never going to be your girlfriend. They're never going to have sex with you. They're going to sit there and chit-chat your ear off. That's what they're going to do. What the hell is that all about? What you want to do is keep that stuff to a minimum. Keep things moving forward. And if you find yourself in a situation where a chick is filibustering, where a chick is delaying, stalling, using tactics... Ever have the chick who breaks up with her boyfriend? You're chatting up a chick and you find out she's got a boyfriend, but she's breaking up with him. So you're like, okay, when are we going to get together? Well, you know, um, even though I've broken up with my boyfriend, you know, I still got my stuff at his place. And I, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't believe in like doing anything behind anybody's back, you know? And oh, what do you mean? He's like your ex boyfriend. Yeah, but. You know, um, like, I, I wouldn't want it done to me, and I wouldn't want to do that to anybody else. Well, then he's not your ex-boyfriend. He's not. He's just not. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Many of you boys out there waste your time on stuff like this. Don't do it. No, I'm not kidding. Don't do it. For God's sake. Like as 101 students believe that dating equals porking. The purpose of going on a date is to get laid. That's the purpose. There is no other purpose. It's not to get to know people. It's not to get friendly with people. 
It's to get laid. Remember that, getting laid. That's why you go to a movie. That's why you buy her a drink. That is why you spend time with her. You want to get laid if you are going out on a date this weekend and you have any doubt, any doubt about why you're going. Like if getting laid is not the reason you're going on a date this weekend, if, if the reason you're going on a date is to have a cup of coffee or discuss politics or, you know, to help somebody with their uh, <laughs> their calculus homework or something, cancel. You want to get laid, and you want nothing less. Some of you boys dumbfound me. I just can't believe what I see. I just can't believe what you call in with. I can't. It is time for you boys to step up to the plate and get the job done, and what you want to do is get them into the sack. No single mothers. Three strikes, you're out. If they don't put out in the first three dates, dump them. If they try to delay having the first date with blah, 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 cut it off. Cut it off. And move on. Seriously, move on. Like as one of one students, we do not date single mothers. They've already made one mistake. We don't want to be paying for the next mistake. It's that simple. We don't spend more than $40 on a date. Zero is optimum. You with me? Do you understand this? I mean, my God, with the economy the way it is, could you really afford to be spending money on some big mouth broad who never shuts up and never gives you what you want? No. You need to be smart about this stuff. For God's sake, step it up. And by the way, speaking of those cell phones, when you pay to go on a date with a woman, when you're paying for dinner or drinks or a movie or whatever you've done, if she's on that cell phone, whether it's talking to somebody or sending text messages, you get the hell out of there. Get the hell out. Because the purpose of paying for the date is you are paying for her exclusive attention. That is not the time to be talking to her girlfriends or anybody else. Anybody else. Stop going out with the baby mamas. Stop going out with chicks who want your money. Stop it. Don't you have any goddamn self-esteem, you morons? It really pisses me off as your professor to see what a bunch of pussies so many of you guys have turned into. My purpose here is to keep you out of commitment, keep you out of relationships, keep you out of marriage. To keep you from spending money, time, and energy on bitches who won't give you what you want. Now, if you have a question for your professor, you're more than welcome. To step up to the podium here and call 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. And there are many women out there who have problems with your professor. They think he's a woman hater. Or they use the word misogynist. They don't know what it means. They use terms like male chauvinist pig. They don't know what that means either. They don't even know where the word chauvinist comes from. That's fine. Your professor encourages, in the spirit of academic freedom, a vigorous classroom debate and discussion. You can compare and contrast. Whatever you want to do, you can do that here in this classroom. You just dial us at 1-800-5800-TOM. All right, it's Like Us 101, and your calls are coming up. Tom Like Us, 1-800-5800-TOM. You're teaching these men how to behave badly. That's and what women like. And they don't get good women. They like men who behave badly. No, 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 no. Oh, they yeah, don't. yeah, 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 yeah. No. It's Likus 101 on the Tom Likus Show. Likus 101, I am your professor. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. 
All right, let's go. Jason on the Tom Likens Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Hi, I have a bit of bit of a situation I wanted to, uh, well, for one, ask your advice on, and for two, give a warning out to all the other guys in America. Uh, I started dating this girl about a year ago, and, uh, you know, we did the, oh, we're in love, oh, baby, oh, love, oh, blah, 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 and uh, I got stupid, and she refused to get on birth control. She kept giving me this line that, uh, Oh, it was bad for her body, or it'd make her fat, or... Are you a new student here? Are you a new student? Uh, I just started listening to, listening to you after she got pregnant, unfortunately. Or else, we we, uh, we tell you, we situation. tell you, when a woman says, I'm allergic to birth control, or it makes me fat, or it makes me moody, they're sending you a sign. And here's another one, when they say they're allergic to latex... They, what they're saying is, I don't want to take birth control. I want to have a baby, and I want you to impregnate me. Yes, yes, they are. And I, I just wanted, I, I did actually hear that from you. Uh, oh, a buddy of mine told me to tune in to you after I found out she was pregnant, and I was so mad that I had never heard a new show before because the first week I was listening, I heard you talk about the girls that don't want to get on birth control thing, and it was my story being told to me out of the out of the speakers in my car. Right. Well, see, you should have been listening because we've been warning guys about this for years. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's true. If they uh, if they don't, if they refuse to get on birth control, it's because they want a kid. She pulled the whole that she would. She didn't say she was allergic to latex, but she'd say, "Oh, I don't like the way it feels." I. I never fell for it, so I, I am a firm believer that I did not want any kids. And I was a little too drunk one night, though, and she actually, we were going at it, and she actually pulled the condom off me. And I mean, I, I was pretty flossed, and she, I mean, I don't want to say forced, because I'm a grown man, I have will, but, you know, you only have so much self-control. She, she, she finished it without protection. And uh, I like, you know what, I like money, but I like money better than women. And yeah, so if a woman pulled the condom off me, that's when I stop. That's my last thrust. I'm done. Huh. By the way, I've had chicks try to do that. You know another thing some of them try to do? If they've got like a real set of claws, I caught one doing this once. If they got a real set of claws, you know, they're obsessed with getting uh, manicures and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They will stick their finger as if they're checking to see if your condom is still on and then poke a hole with the nail right there while you're in the middle of having sex. Huh. I oh, yeah. Sense. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's, uh, that's pretty intense. Well, uh, uh, hey, uh, uh, there ain't much I can do about the pregnancy now, but uh, I was thinking about getting a vasectomy. I did a few phone calls, and I Planned Parenthood here in Portland, uh, it's 600 bucks. I, I was just curious to what you're Best on money one. you ever spent. I, that's kind of what I thought. I mean, I, yeah. I was wondering if uh, there's anybody else out there that uh, had ever gotten one and maybe if they could say they agree or disagree. or Why would they disagree? I mean, you know what a vasectomy is. Yeah, yeah. I guess there really wouldn't be any reason to disagree. I don't know. I was just worried about 20 years down the road, you know, wishing I had a few more kids after, you know, the after, you know, 20 years down the road when my You have the option. Uh, you have the option of freezing your sperm hmm. and saving it for a rainy day. Really? Yes. Uh, at, at the time of the of the uh, surgery, you need or? to talk with the doctor and and well, I don't I don't know when they do it. You need to talk to the doctor about that. I have no interest in freezing sperm. Yeah. <laughs> huh. I have no interest in children having yeah. children. It's, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, if this was you know the eighteen fifties or nineteen ten when you know the couple stayed together and they raised the kids and the mom stayed at home and the dad but, but it, it, i mean i really do want that that fairy tale relationship but this is two thousand and seven and i mean the odds of that happening are are a fair, I mean, it's a it's fairy tale and they call it a fairy tale for a reason yeah 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 they do it's, I don't know. My family saying Mary you're Mary I said no no she can you know I own my own house I got stuff going for me, and I talked to a lawyer already, and he, you know, he, he, he said even with the prenup, don't get married. He said, as long as you don't get married, all she can take you for is a child support. He said even with the prenup, after if you've been married for a few years and she gets a good lawyer, she's still going to end up with what, with part of your stuff. And this is what I tell guys all the time, and I'm not even an attorney. 
It's, uh, I don't know. Why do you need to be married? Oh, I don't. It's just my, you know, family pressure. Oh, she's pregnant. Oh, you know, and I mean, ideally, if, if I thought we would stay married for the next 80 or 60 years till we're dead, I, I would do it. But the odds Very are few just, people are doing that anymore. I don't know anybody that has gotten married that didn't end up with an alimony payment or half their house being taken from them. And it's just, I just don't know what to do. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I know there, there's the option, you know, you can sign your rights over. I, I don't want to not be a part of the kid's life, though. I, I was talking to her about, you know, hey, you, you know. You I mean, have rights. Do you have an attorney? No, no, not right now. I, I, Why I, not? Oh, I honestly, I don't have the money for a retainer, or else I would have one. But uh, I, have, I, I could if I refine it, if I pull, borrowed against my house, but I don't want to do that. Wait a minute. What do you do for a living? You're that poor. Uh, construction. I, how can I'm you living... afford? How can you afford to own a house? Very, very carefully. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. It's, it's Maybe you should rent. be owning a house. Maybe you should sell your house and rent. Yeah, but rent houses are rented. expensive. I know, but they gain appreciation. I, no, I, no, no, not looking... now. They're not. Not now. They're not. Well, yeah, it goes up and down every year, but in the long no, run. No, it doesn't go up and down every year. It goes up for a few years. It goes down for a few years. You know, all, you're one flood away or one fire away from being homeless. Yeah, but, I mean, life's a risk. It's, uh, I don't know. The way I look at it. But you know what a bigger know. risk is? Not protecting your rights by hiring an attorney. Well, I mean, what the, the, the attorney I was talking to, and he basically said, even if you do hire me, there's really not much I can do. He says, if you guys separate, child support is a mandatory thing if she goes after it. He said he can draw. I'm not talking thing. about child support. I'm talking about visitation. You're saying you want to be part of the child's life. You have rights. If you have any doubt that you're going to have the right to see your kid. Oh, you... no, 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 no. Uh, you must have misunderstood me. I say, I'm, I was saying I was thinking about the consideration of signing over my rights. Uh, my parental rights, you know, legally to protect myself against the child support thing. But that doesn't protect you against child support. I thought it does. It... No. Hmm. What does that? What does it do then? It, 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 it's it's like uh, if I if I sold you a, an acre of land on the moon and you signed a, an agreement. Huh. I, I guess I'm not following you here. If I if let me let's say I came to you and I said give me a thousand dollars and I'll give you an agreement I'm selling you an acre of land on the moon. How valuable would that document be? Oh, I mean that's not going to be nothing. But I mean, right? I thought, Hello, I go, are you getting the idea here? I no. Tell you the truth, I feel a little bit stupid. I'm I, I, I I'm not getting the getting the uh, reference. You're not getting the reference. It no, isn't worth no. the paper it's printed on. Let me give you another example. Let's say I wanted to make you my slave, and I put it in writing. Yeah. Did that piece of paper have any value? Uh, no, I guess not. Let's say I wanted to take away your right to vote. Just sign here. Would that document be enforceable? No, no. Right, no, I mean, right. Well, so you could sign any document you want. You will never escape child support. Ever. Well, ever. Well, under what any circumstance, I, what if? What if? Forget it. Well, no, I'm, I'm asking. What are what are people talking about though? When then when they're saying when they say you know sign over, you can sign over your complete rights, which means you have no ties to them. What, These yeah. are people who don't know what they're talking about. Okay. You can sign over your parental rights, yes, you can, but you can't give up on paying child support, no matter what you agree to give up. Okay. okay. Ever. I see. I see. Under I any circumstances. Like that because huh. child support is the right of the child. Okay. See, I thought it would. I thought if you signed over your rights, then like uh, I know what you thought. You can't do yeah, it. Yeah. I guess. Okay. Well, I see. Is there is there anything that you, that you can do to protect? You know, to kind of anything you can get. You know, me and her to sign while we're still together and everybody's happy to. You know, to make it where she couldn't come after me for child support. No. How, how would a person avoid it? Even if she signed a document that said, I promise that under no circumstances will I ever come after you for child support. Ever, 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 ever. Sign me. It would mean nothing. Okay. 
Huh. I mean, you're not hearing me. I oh, can't no, make this any clearer. You could sign it a hundred times. You could get every notary public in the state of Oregon to sign off on it. Just put stamp it and put your thumbprint next to it and everything. Doesn't matter. Okay. So there's really nothing you can do then. What did I say? Okay. Huh. Well, I guess I Nothing. Know. There's nothing you can do. Ever, 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 ever under any circumstances. No exceptions. No asterisks. No sub clauses. No exceptions to the rule. None. Huh. That's unfortunate. It's a fact, Jack. I'll be damned. Well, huh. I don't know where to go from here, I guess. We try to make it work. And... You don't have to make it work. Oh. Just pay your goddamn child support and move on. Yeah, I was thinking about that, you know. I mean... Jesus. I don't know. What do, what do they generally take? About 25, 30% on, you know, just a standard basis? Dude, I, didn't I tell you to get an attorney? Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you think I have law credentials in every state in the United States? You think I, I'm not a lawyer? I'm, I'm one step removed from a disc jockey. Who, look who you're asking. Stop oh, being okay, a I'm... cheap bastard and get an attorney. And if you can't afford an attorney, sell your goddamn house, move into a studio apartment so you can protect your rights as a person. Stop living like a moron. You're 22. You're too young to own a house anyway. Hmm. Start living in the real world, son. Well, I, I, I think I am. I'm. No, I'm you're not. No, you're not. You're you're impregnating women who won't go on birth control. You own a house you can't afford to own. If your house burned down, you'd be bankrupt. No, it's, uh, it's insured for more than it's worth. I'd actually get a new one built and be a little better off than I am now. Yeah, I'll believe that when I see it. That's what homeowner's insurance is. Yeah, well, a lot of people have found out how good their homeowner's insurance is. Once they've had fires or earthquakes, they find out floods. Hmm. I, I My home was decimated by toxic black mold. I have a $2.5 million home. Do you know how much the insurance company paid me? Uh, no, I'm going to Six, I'm gonna tell you, six hundred dollars. Yeah. So don't be so cocky, young man, because you have no idea. You are way in over your head. Yeah, but in the long run, if I don't fail, I'll uh, I'll be real <sighs> glad I did it. You know, I I mean, I could go on renting like you're not else. ready. I you're hear. not ready. You know what? I moved to Los Angeles in 1988. At the peak of a real estate bubble. Just like you bought your house at the peak of a real estate bubble. Now, even though I had a six-figure income, I couldn't afford to make a 20% down payment. I couldn't afford to pay for all the proper insurance to own a home and pay all the proper expenses. So I waited nine years before I bought a house until I could properly pay for it. You will not be better off years from now. If the construction industry takes a dive, and by the way, that's what people are predicting because we're on the verge of a real estate recession or a depression, people like you aren't going to find any work. And then you're not going to be able to make that mortgage payment. And then you're going to find out the hard way because you're going to have nothing. Where's your father? What's that? Where is your father? Uh, he's, uh, he lives a uh, couple hours away. I don't see him very uh, often. Yeah, well, you know what? You you want to start seeing him a little more often. Because you need a man to kick your ass. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I agree totally on that. But... I know you don't, but you're a little pussy boy who was clearly raised by your mother. It's yeah, clear. I you're was, a, but, uh... Yeah, well, I... you're a sissy. And it is time that you uh, go find out what it was about your dad that got your mom so excited. She wanted him to knock her up so she could have you. Excuse me? You heard what I, I said. I, I, I know, but I mean, I call in to talk about a general 
I'm telling you what your bigger problem is. No male influence in your life. And your mom telling you that your dad's a loser. And that's why you don't call him. And that's why you don't talk to him. Because your mom... No, I I talk to him. I just... I mean, he lives, I don't know, about 200 miles away. Why don't you see him? Why don't... Do you consult him uh, for advice on stuff like this? Yeah, yeah, I do all the time. So when, when, when you told him that your girlfriend didn't want to use birth control, what did he tell you? Well, actually, I never consulted him on That's that. That's my point, Buster. Okay. It's time to start consulting with your dad about stuff like this. Well, after she did get pregnant, I did go to him, and he's telling me to marry her and crap. I'm like, no, no. Well, he's wrong about that, but at least, yeah. you know what? It doesn't matter. He's a sounding board, and you need to use him for that. All right, I've had about enough, as much as I can take here, Jason. I mean, Jesus Christ, you know? What the hell is going on here? Tom Likes. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 The 2008 Likehead Calendar Release Party. This Friday at Canyon Club in Agoura Hills, California. Visit blowmeuptom.com for details. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood. Likas 101 at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Joseph on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. All right. I'm happy to talk to you. I need help. What's the problem? Well, I I had a girlfriend. Uh, she left me like a week ago, and um, I don't know. She's just uh, basically we fought a lot, and uh, she's just stringing me along right now. I'm trying to get over her. I'm trying to go out with my friends, but I just keep, you know, she's stringing me along, so I feel like I'm still, you know, I'm still have a chance. Well, first or, of all, you never should have had a girlfriend. You're too young. I know. That's That's why I know. So man up and get over it. But it's hard. I go out with my friends and I, you know, I have a good time at first. And then after a while, I see, you know. Stop being such a lovesick little boy. Please. You're you're no man. You're a little boy. Are you going to grow up or what? I need to. Yeah. Yeah, we'll start doing it. Man up. Pick up chicks. Have meaningless sex with any chick you find. Let's go. I do, you know what, I do that right now, but it doesn't mean anything to me right now. So It's I'm not supposed to, to mean anything to you. It's the, it's the idea of meaningless sex. Meaningless. You're absolutely right. How do you expect meaningless sex to mean to you? You're right. By definition, it's meaningless. Therefore, it has no meaning. Absolutely right. A real man gets over a relationship with a woman by banging as many women as possible. Hot ones, not so hot ones, thin ones, fat ones, anybody who's available. You know what? I did that for like a year and a half, and I, I'm telling you, I did that to the fullest, to the fullest. You're and a little I boy. Never... You're a little boy. You, you must stop with this love, puppy, sick, love, sick, that. Stop it. You're making all of us sick. Yeah. That is- Where are your friends? Don't they uh, don't they back you up on this? You know what? Most of them do, but my roommate has a girlfriend, so he's always with his girlfriend at the house. And it's like, oh man, that's that used to be my my you know my oh. partner. And now, I mean, I I should oh. I go out by myself. I go to bars now, and you know what? I get numbers, and I get, come home with girls. And I have, I always have. I haven't done this since the breakup, but I mean. It, it didn't mean anything to me before. You haven't done what matter. since? Wait, you haven't done what since the breakup? I haven't. Uh, I haven't gone out as much. I used to go out. I used to be like everybody knows me as a man whore. I used to go out and I used to just you know I used to bring home girls home all the time. Why and aren't you it, doing it now? Because I'm thinking that I'm still might be able to uh, if I want to hold on to that girl. But you don't want to hold on to her. That's what I'm thinking right now. That yeah. You're absolutely right about that. So stop mooning after her. 
You're right, Tom. I appreciate that. I don't know why your friends aren't telling you what I'm telling you. They do. Most of them do. Just the ones that are the, the my roommate is just, you know, just right now, it's just he's all hooked on this girl. He's always at home with the girl. And it's like, it's, you know, it's just I don't like seeing that. It sucks. I don't know why. You know what? You're free. He's not. Yeah, exactly. I see people with girlfriends and wives all the time. I live alone. Boo hoo hoo. You know, yeah, but I'm, I, I don't know. I'm so used to having a girl next to me at the end of the night, and it's just like when I'm alone, I don't know. You don't can like have me. a girl next to you at the end of the night. You said you get all the girls you want. Yeah, you're right. Every if night. I need a girl next to me at the end of the night, I pick up the phone, I make a phone call like Domino's. I call up. And it's delivered to me. Yeah, I, actually, I could do that if I want. And I need to do that. I will do that. All right, Tom. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> I miss her. <gasps> Nothing like the freedom of being alone, living alone. Holy crap, it's great. David, on Like Us 101 with your professor. Hello. David? Tom. Yes. Hey, how you doing, Tom? I just called to tell you that I greatly respect what you're doing here on the radio. I gave you mad respect for all of this. Thank you. I, I mean, I just started listening to you, and I think you're a genius. People need to hear what you're saying. I couldn't I mean, agree more. I mean, I'm 20, and I... I don't have time for a girl. I don't take a girl out on a date, and I don't spend more than forty dollars on her if I don't think I'm going to get what I want. Hey, hey, I'll we can't say we can't out. say that word. We can't say that word. Oh, I'm so sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> but uh, Tom, I was just wondering how you got into all this. I mean, were you a psychologist first, and then no. you opened up your practice here on the radio? No, I was an amateur. And I used to have a person who worked on this program who had the same problems guys call in with. And this began as an off-the-air conversation with someone who worked on my show. I see what you're saying. And I'll give you the exact conversation we originally had. He said he was talking about one particular chick. He said, I don't get it. I got a limousine. I got flowers. I picked her up. I took her to a great restaurant. We went to a concert. Uh, I took her home in the limo, and then she didn't give me anything. Why? And I, and I said, I'm going to tell you why. Because you got a limo, you, you took her out to dinner, you bought her flowers. <laughs> that was a waste of money and a waste of time. And that's why she's not putting it out. Oh, that, so you can't give girls everything they want like that. I totally agree with that. So oh. that's how this started. It was an off-the-air conversation with someone who worked on the show. And eventually I said to myself, you know what? The conversation we're having here in the studio is better than anything we're doing on the air. And, and that's how this just all started off, and it took off. That's right. Is, that's uh, right. Yes. I've been listening to you for about two months, but I tune in every day now. I have everything that you have to say. I love that. Yeah. I mean, I think more people should listen to you. I'm gonna, I've been trying to get my little brother to listen to your talk show. I'm like, this is how you need to react to women. This is the way you, you should approach women. This is how you should feel about it. And and stop being so sentimental. Oh, please. Oh, jeez. I hate that crap. I was I was all on that during high school. Like, oh, you're the love of my life. I got past that. You know how I think about it? Would you ever be sentimental about a urinal? Oh, <laughs> it was in the Shell station. It was <laughs> late at night, and I'd had a couple of six-packs. <laughs> and I needed it so badly, I was hanging on to it, and it was there for me when I needed it. And now... I never pass by that shell station anymore, but I think about it all the time. I mean, can you imagine that? For God's sake. Our email address, Tom, at blowinguptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.